Good morning. Uh, first of course, thank you for the committee, C4, gathering uh, all of us and inviting uh, me to share uh, our assessment or opinion about pitlane restorations. Let me start by saying that uh, we, all, uh, we all know what happened in 2015, um, the damaging fires with the haze, and it's very comforting for me as an activist when we learned that the Indonesian government, I guess for the first time, uh, fully realized that pitland fires are uh, the worst and uh, pitland should not be open. All remaining pitland have to be uh, conserved, protected, the remaining healthy pitland. So exactly what Pak Taman was saying is also exactly what uh, President Jokowi uh, instructed to all the government levels. So, but we have half of our pitland has been degraded and open. We have about 15 million hectares of pitland. Half of them, about half of them are still intact. We're going to protect that and half of them has been degraded to many levels. And the challenges for now is for us to not only protect the remaining, but also how to bring the degraded and drained uh, pit, about half of the pitland, uh, make it, some have to be referred back for conservation, but some can be for cultivations. Uh, shifting of the cultivation practices are needed. But the challenge, of course, a lot of that area has been license out with very legitimate license. So a transition period and transition scheme on how to put those cultivation area which have already have a valid license can work out as the same time the ecological function of pitland can be restored. I like to share with you also that in the last uh, 12 months, uh, we are very pleased to learn many local wisdom and practices by communities of farmers in Kalimantan, uh, in Sumatra, that I spend most of the time, uh, whether in this, uh, West Kalimantan, Central or East Kalimantan, in Sumatra, in Jambi, Riau, or South Sumatra. Uh, farmers have been using pitlands for cultivation. Uh, I agree with what uh, Eddie was saying. Uh, I've also seen it in other areas in Sumatra, like in Riau, or in South Kalimantan, Southern Kalimantan, where uh, people use the slice and burn in the past and there was never a problem even in pitland. But situation changed, ecology has changed because a lot of big canals being uh, opened, not only by government but also by corporation in the past and we want to correct that. Number two, I learned that also farmers uh, actively rewetting the pitlands, not only, so there's two ways to rewet the pitlands. One, all the canals which have been built and drained are blocked, so dams are built. I've seen communities with the support of NGO, of course, government, also doing that. Uh, it's very encouraging to see community have the initiative. I've also uh, seen experience uh, uh, with my eyes that communities also actively reward the pitlands by building, uh, constructing the well, the deep well, and uh, suck the water and reweb the pitlands in their own plantations during the dry months and uh, it can be pretty, pretty effective in 2015. Some of the area of pitland belong to communities were not burned while all the neighbors pitland have been burned. The reason was because they have the deep well and keep rewetting that every day. Of course, the source of water was available. I also learned that uh, from a part of Ataman and also other communities in Kalimantan, uh, that started not using fires, no longer slash and burn, maybe you can call it slash and rot. So they still slash and open uh, the shrub in pitland, but instead of burning it, uh, they apply uh, decomposer. And within three weeks, all of this foliage above the ground have been degraded and become fertilizers, it's like manure, back to the soil. Uh, we tested that uh, a few months ago in Santa Kalimantan uh, without putting any dolomite or kapur. After one month of slicing and putting the composer, we saw the pH from four raise up to six, only one month by using this active decomposer. That's also learning from, from the farmers in the Kalimantan. So there's a lot of local wisdom on how communities have been 
uh, living in the pit land uh, and practicing cultivations that are suitable with the ecology. Uh, last point I'd like to share with you is that the restoration of the pit land need a very detailed mapping. So science is needed here. Uh, in the beginning, I made a very easy assumption. Let me tell you this. The experts told me that if we have to close canals, we need to build the dams in a spot wherever we find 50 centimeters of altitude difference. So you put the dam here, you go along and measure the topography. Whenever you find a 50 centimeters lower altitude, you build a second dam, and so on and so on. If you go to pitland area, you see it's pretty flat there. Yeah? Pitland stretch kilometers and kilometers is pretty flat. Of course, it's not flat because there's a pit dooms and so on. So it's easy to assume that the slope from the peak of the domes that we can't see it because it's very flat, all the way to the river, the slope is very small and the slope is quite consistent. I mean, easy to assume that. So if we have a, a canal uh, stretch, for example, four kilometers, and then the altitude between kilometer four and kilometer one also was four centimeters, then if we want to build dams every centimeters difference, it's easy by mathematic, you need to build eight dams. Four kilometers, four meters of uh, width. Eight dams, and eight dams multiply evenly every half a kilometer. One dam, another half a kilometer, another dam, and another half a kilometer, another dam. But once we map it scientifically with laser, that's not the case. There is a stretch that the slope goes very steeply compared with the other slope. I mean, not steep. We can't see it by our eyes because everything was flat. But when you measure it, it's much, much steeper than the other one. It turns out that even in one side, the dams were only 400 meters apart. In another side, it's the same dam was 1.2 kilometers apart, three times further away. The mistake could be made easily if we don't do a detailed mapping. So to do uh, effective restorations in rewetting by building dams, detailed mapping has to be done. And that needs science, that needs technology. It's quite expensive, it's quite time consuming. Uh, I'm really looking forward with the scientific community to help us to do a quick mapping, efficient and cheap. Thank you. Second to Bhaktangan, the Bhaktangan